Hi, it's the usual sound check.
Hello, stream. Can you last last sound check? Can you hear me? Please respond in chat. Cool, cool, cool. Good. Then <clears throat> let's get started. So, good evening. <laughs> I have, okay, a lot people are coming in. So, hello and welcome to our community Austria October 2023 meetup. As always, presented uh, by .NET Devs AT. We are a non profit organization that are organizing these events here in Vienna. You find us on various platforms. Yeah, thank you all for joining today. Full house here. Um, also, hi to the stream and to the viewers of the recording afterwards. Um, we also want to thank quickly our sponsors, Theater Every and Rubicon, who supports us financially, that we can uh, have equipment for the streams and and everything and also thank you to chatbrains they um support us with a 12 months product license that we raffle and we have two raffles one here and one for you on stream and for the ones on stream you can take part in the raffle if you type in the chat with hash chatbrains and we do it afterwards um some quick community news not much this time quick reminder november 14 to 16 is the dotnet conf with the release of dotnet 8 8 <laughs> <laughs> i'm in dotnet framework for five projects at the moment and uh, also a quick look up a uh, look in the future of our events so next event will be 21st of november about .NET 5, 6, 7, and 8 for developers in a rush at, at KTM. The question mark is not valid anymore. Uh, December uh, is still in talks. What uh, talk, who's, which speaker is there, but it will have my tech talk. Uh, in January, we're talking about, uh, so Paul Ohotska is talking about functional development in C Sharp at Square. In February, I'm talking about uh, how Copilot help you for development. Again, a tech talk. And I, it's March or April. It's a, co uh, a meetup together event with the Unity meetup. And it's uh, how to build a one v one multiplayer game with Unity and .NET. So we have quite schedule. That's preliminary. Everything can change. Don't. Don't sue me if something doesn't come, but you get updated every month. And with that, I'm happy to hand over to our speaker today, Matthias Koch. Kodana. Good. So we make a little small quick switch here and Hopefully, if everything works well with the Mac. Ah, quick. If you have questions, ask them during, during here. If you're here in the audience, I have a microphone that also the people on stream can hear your question. And the stream questions get repeated by Stefan. Ist es jetzt schon da? Also Streaming meine ich? Ne, ob das Streaming jetzt schon da ist? Ja, okay. Hören tut man mich auch? Ja, richtig aufgedreht. Okay, in welche Richtung? So? 
Jetzt? All good? Okay. So, welcome also from my side. And I'm very sorry, I'm not the most German German. I can very late. Uh, we thought it's starting at seven. Okay, I still need my stuff here. Okay, a little bit of introduction. First of all, my name is Matthias. Um, I, I could play the bingo with the companies over there because I have been also at uh, Rubicon, which was where some awesome years, I have to say. Um, but yeah, today as JetBrains um, and with a topic with actually a pretty new product that we have. And the title is Elevating C-Sharp Code Quality with Kodana, Jump Towards Perfection. So half of that is ChatGPT generated, I'll be honest. Um, back <laughs> the name looks like <laughs> no, but actually not. So I wrote a blog post about this stuff um, a couple of months back, and I was kind of yeah, I was like yeah, yeah, please pick me. I want to write the blog post, and then sometime later, Andreas was asking me, can you please uh, have a have a session at our meetup about this. So this is really the first time I'm doing this as a talk and it's also quite interesting because many things have changed since then so it's only about four months back that i wrote the blog post like i said pretty new product meanwhile they fixed a lot already and um i i want to mention this right at the at the beginning because my things today um uh, there will be some imagine it right now um, also, depending on who's doing .NET, okay, who's doing front end, JavaScript, TypeScript, a few, Python, Go, JVM, Go, really? I mean, from my side, I was not man. That's an offense, <laughs> but I heard you. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, so this, this product supports a lot of ecosystems, uh, but like I said, I want to stress this really. Uh, I want to stress this. Um, team is working very hard. I just had a conversation also with one of the developers from the .NET side, and it's really things are changing quite a lot. But uh, let's start with the wrong slide. Okay, here again. Agenda. So first of all, uh, we will check out what actually is Kodana, then uh, talk a little bit about the target groups. Why should I put this? Talk a little bit about the tar target groups. What actually does that mean, linter, in terms of language, et cetera? Uh, then look at configuration files, files, actually Perl. Um, then we will do a short demo. Actually, it's not sure it would be the majority of the time, I guess. Um, and then everything else. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start. Kudana. You should see this here. This was in 2016. That was my first blog post I wrote for JetBrains. At that time, I was still in the role of a developer. Um, but I found this uh, topic really interesting, and it actually originates from my team back then at, at Rubicon. Uh, what we wanted is to establish a zero warning policy in Team City because at the time, Team City and also ReSharper didn't really support that. So we had, for instance, the I think I think we also delivered a feature, which was that we can actually see warnings in the solution-wide analysis. Uh, up until then, it only showed errors, and so this blog post discusses in length how you would do that, um, and it actually uses a tool that we have for for the majority of lifetime for ReSharper um, because there's a tool which is called inspect code which actually gives used inspect code before so also quite a few yeah so for, for those that haven't heard about it it's a CLI tool you run this on your solution file and it produces an XML report where it defines which inspections are at which particular point so that was quite in interesting and also Team City supported to show you that report. And it's very, very poor. <laughs> this little graphic here. I mean, at the time it was the best that we had. 
Um, but as you can see on the left hand side, you can uh, change the scope. And yeah, that was my, do you remember that? My coconut really sharper plugin. Uh, so on the left, left hand side, it's like the solution explorer basically. And on the right hand side, you can see the actual is better, but it is really great. I think you can still I think it was switch to your ID. I think it was support, but it really was great. Yeah. Oh, only two share the pain. Okay, so this is an issue. I think you can see a lot of uploads also. Yeah, so Reshopper has a large ecosystem of plugins as well as Rider. And for a very long time, there was no way to integrate. Uh, community built inspections into your own report. Yeah, so that was of of course you want that because you have the plugins inside your IDE, so you want those inspections also in the in the general report. Okay, so that was not a great situation we were in, uh, but yeah, it's also a lot of years back. Um, this I will give you as a small introduction. This. This is what particularly in the demo, um, but this is, you know, it, it looks much better. You have a nice sunburst graph. I mean, what else can you can you ask for? Yeah. So what is, what is Kodana now? I think a lot of people already kind of got the idea. Um, it's a code quality platform. What does it mean? So um, we, we will later also declare what target groups it it helps to work with the code, uh, but generating code quality in all kinds of terms. And we will see a lot more as, as we go here. Um, it's compatible with your favorite CI tool. So name a few, I don't know, Team CD, GitHub Actions, Azure Pipelines, um, GitLab, all you want, yeah, basically. And it's based on our existing analyzers. So like I said, um, Inspect Code is a tool that existed for years already. It's slightly more complicated how Kodana actually uses that. Uh, but in essence, it's like that. If we talk about IntelliJ IDEA, for instance, that the, the point that I try to make is we're not rewriting any analyzers. We're using the existing ones that we already have. Yeah? It provides deep integration with IDEs, so plural actually, and I should have also mentioned editors there, so people might take that hint already. Um, deep integration with IDEs, particularly our own, and it uses the industry standard Zarif. Um, not sure if you, I pronounced that correctly, but who knows about Zarif? Yeah, so as far as I know, I'm, I'm not too familiar with Sonus Source, uh, but I think they also issue this as, a, as an artifact, right? You don't know? I thought I thought you raised your hand. Um, okay, so for whom is Kudana? It's not just for for developers, but also for QA engineers to check about the code quality, and, uh, license audit, and also we have uh, unfortunately not not yet for .NET or in any form, but PHP they. Uh, created a very nice, interesting blog post about their integration with Kodana, where they try to check vulnerabilities in code. But yeah, not yet for for uh, C Sharp or .NET. And legal and compliance departments. Now, that's actually what I meant about licenses and all that stuff. So when you consume dependencies, you want your code to be uh, how's it called compliant with all those licenses that you're consuming, or the projects with their licenses. Yeah to have that compliant. So in the .NET space, often we, we don't have just C Sharp and VB, but also C and C++. Little note here, uh, this actually requires a solution file for that. So for that, we have the linter, which is called Kodana for .NET. Yeah. Um, for languages like JS and, and TypeScript, that is actually contained in multiple linters. So for instance, also in the linter for .NET, but actually also, I mean, that, that goes by the name, uh, or that, that comes with the name, Kodana for JS, um, and also for, for PHP. And on the, Java, uh, on the Java side, 
um, with, with Java, well, on the JVM side, with Java, Kotlin, Groovy. Um, we have a linter for JVM. And as far as I know, there's also a community, community edition for that. Um, ah, yeah. And for Android, there's a community edition, Python, etc. Yeah, I think that that's clear. But point I'm trying to make is some linters, they don't just support, like, like .NET, they don't just support those on top here, which you, which you kind of categorize at .NET, but also front-end, because lots of .NET projects also use front-end in some way. Okay. Uh, configuration, the central part for configuration is the Kodana YAML file. So that's a file that you commit into your repository and it contains a couple of configuration data. For instance, we just added the linters because if you have a .NET project, you should also explicitly say, I want to use the .NET linter for that. Um, but it also has, uh, you can also choose between profiles. So profiles, in, I tried to make this very short, we have a couple of predefined ones, and the basic idea is you start with the starter profile, just not to be overwhelmed with issues that get reported. Yeah, but there is also a re recommended one. Again, like I said initially, um, this is something that that is still in 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 work in progress, so to say. Yeah, there is still some work to be done there, um, but yeah, generally the idea. Um, project settings also, because if you just imagine you have a repository with multiple solution files, then you need to explicitly say which solution file do you want to run the inspections on or the, the um, um, yeah, inspection on. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can also define thresholds, so some kind as a quality gate. Just imagine, let's say we, we start with the Greenfield project. Uh, no idea how often that happens. But uh, Greenfield project, no issues whatsoever. And then you want to keep it at that. Yeah, you don't want to introduce more issues or any single issue. So that's why you introduced uh, such thresholds. Um, we can also configure inspections and uh, paths that should be included or excluded, or actually just ex excluded. Um, and about configuring inspections, that's basically, let's say, what's a good one? I remember we had an inspection in Reshopper that said, turn method into static. And we never wanted that because we said, okay, this is really about the instance. So you could just disable that inspection, for instance. It also allows you to bootstrap your projects. Uh, example here, if you have front-end code, for instance, you have a package JSON. You really need to execute yarn install or npm install or something just to restore those packages so that um, that the analysis can properly resolve all the all the symbols and that's not it yeah a second configuration file or in most cases just a second yeah is your ci configuration file because as i mentioned before um kodana integrates with your favorite ci cd tool actually i missed the opportunity to ask Who's using GitHub Actions? Okay, Azure Pipelines. Yeah, Team City. I knew that. <laughs> uh, did I miss anything? Yeah, GitLab. Jenkins. Go person. <laughs> Go. Um, okay, so yeah, you integrate that, and of course, you also need to adapt your configuration file. To, to execute the analysis. So, but one, what information do we put here? First of all, we will uh, look at that a little bit later, the baseline file, which is kodana zarev.json. That is something I can all, already kind of kind of uh, spoiler that, um, but imagine you don't have a greenfield project, then of course you don't want to feel overwhelmed by all the hundreds and thousands of issues that already exist. So you put them into the baseline, something like, like a backlog, you could think of it. Um, also, you can define the project directory. That was quite interesting uh, for me when I prepared the talk, which was yesterday. Um, what you can do if you have a single repository, or like, like a mono repository would be a good example. Um, and you don't have just a .NET solution, but also front-end code, like I mentioned before, then you would need to adapt the project directory, yeah? Because you can only have one Kodana 
YAML file in a single uh, folder, of course, and then you would need to trigger it based on uh, different project directories or working directories. Also, we would need to pass the Kodana token because we will see that a little bit later. Um, there's a there's basically a cloud service which we provide where you can where you can analyze the reports that get generated. And uh, also one one important thing to note, and that is again something very special about .NET. Most projects or most other ecosystems they work fine with the analysis if it runs in Docker. Yeah, .NET has problems. <laughs> Uh, so um, that was, I think, the, the the Docker part was the original approach, and then we rather quickly, I would say, at least from what I noted, um, came to the conclusion that okay, some projects just don't build inside Docker. Yeah, you have problems with the SDK, you have problems. What what was what else was there? Um, or with workloads, etc. So some some projects just don't compile Docker, and that that's why there's also a native mode. And native basically means it doesn't run in a container. Uh, just if you if you have a pipeline and you can already restore the project, you can already compile it. Then Kodana in native mode will handle it just fine. Okay, and that leads us to the demo part. Man, this will be interesting. Okay, I need to share. Uh, okay. Okay, where do we start? So I have my little save point here because that's what I tried yesterday and that worked. That worked very nicely actually, but I still need the save point. <laughs> okay, just imagine we have a solution file or a solution right here. Does it actually have a, an error? I had just because I configured it like that. Let me just uh, delete that maybe because, yeah, let's delete that. Oh yeah, sure. Let me see. View because I always forget the shortcut. Where's view? Yeah. Appearance. Okay, let me know what works. 125, yeah? Okay. So this should not be an error. Come on. Warning. <clears throat> okay, so we have a solution file. Or solution, nothing, nothing too serious here. A little bit of, ins I mean, it doesn't. The, the code doesn't matter actually. What I want to show you is, if you go to go to action and then type Kodana, you will see this. Yeah, and I also need to put up my notes here next to me. Just one second. Yeah, because ah 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 ah, I forgot. I have slides for that. Trying locally. <laughs> So, trying locally, okay. <laughs> Try Kodana analysis with, uh, or code analysis with Kodana. So that's where we want to go. And even, then you see this pop up here, and like I said, try locally. And then you get this little config file, yeah. Um, as you see in the, in the header, this will be added to the repository already. Um, you also have the link where you can read more about the documentation and all. Uh, we can also pass the token already. I will not do that uh, right here. Um, of course, we want to save that YAML file. I mean, we could also just run. If you want to try it, you could also just run it like that and not have any side effects, so to say. And we can also pass baseline, but we will do that later with uh, our actual, actual CI build. Um, so let's go through that uh, one more time. Version, yeah, this is if we introduce some some new properties uh, to, to the YAML file. Um, this is the profile that I mentioned earlier. So at the start, we will start with starter, uh, but you can also switch to, I'm not even sure. I think you might, I think you might have completion later on. Where's my mouse? My mouse. Starter. Ah, here. Yeah, so this is what I wanted. Uh, we start with starter. And we also have the linter. Yeah, linters. Uh, those are generally Docker images that get uh, deployed. Yeah. So I'm not sure if we also have completion here. Let's let's see. No, unfortunately not. 
but what I could also type is JS or JVM, I think uh, that would also work. We, we go with .NET. So let's run this. And now you see we get a tool window that looks very similar to the normal inspection tool window that you have in Rider or also in, in ReSharper. Um, so we can kind of trickle in here and see what kind of redundancies and similar declaration do we have. But the really, the really nice bit is basically uh, that we can open this report in the browser and we can just try it here, right there in the browser. And from top to bottom, let's go, let's go through dark and light mode. Yeah, very important. Um, log in. Let's. Can I dismiss this? No. Um, but then we have Zoom. Yeah, sure. Sorry, just one second. Like this. Yeah. Um, so we have these tabs up, up here. At first, we have some actual problems. <laughs> Uh, 11 uh, baseline so later on we will we will move our existing problems to the baseline configuration we will check out a little bit later as well as project audit but this is the heart so to say for Kodana so you have this little sunburst uh, uh, chart and then we can dive in into uh, moderate severity moderate for instance then check language usage opportunities and then we see we down here we have all the issues that that get filtered from that or that remain from the filter uh, we can zoom out again of course we can also select by folders whatever or this should this looks wrong because there's only one or maybe i just have one file where i have issues that could also be actually uh, but if, if you have more of course there would be the uh, the whole tree structure then we can also filter by severity Category, this is, uh, those are the same categories that you also know from ReSharper and Rider. So nothing fancy about that. Language usage opportunities, that, that's the one that I like the most because whenever you upgrade to a new .NET framework, uh, sorry, .NET SDK framework, <laughs> what a bad word, um, then what you want to have are those quick fixes that allow you to migrate the whole code base to a new language feature. At least I like really like that. Yeah. Um, so this is this is my favorite. Um, types is just another categorization, and then we also have tags. So for instance, I have a, maintain an open source project on the site, and because it targets multiple um, target frameworks, then I would, for instance, also have .NET six. Yeah, or you could also so. I mean, it depends on what kind of issues you have in your solution, but yeah, plenty of text where you can filter. And the most notable one is the uh, differ differentiation between uh, target frameworks, so .NET 6, .NET, uh, .NET 7, or .NET framework like Andreas. <laughs> um, okay, a little bit further, we can uh, go through by files or by problems, and of course also search here. Yeah, so very very fancy fast search um, that was locally let's close this Come on. right since we move back to the IDE now we also get the notification about yeah Kodana YAML file has been created so I will just add that and let me also um, go to the file system view because then we actually see this also here and maybe is, is this actually big enough yeah okay Good. What's next? Um, uh, one thing I wanted to note is, since uh, at the beginning I mentioned Docker and native mode, Kodana right here is working in the headless mode because uh, Rider basically gives the information right from the IDE itself. So but probably that's my assumption at least that it gives the Serif uh, file over there or the in Serif format, and so actually. Kodana is just running as a plugin here, and that's probably the best way to describe it. Okay, next part. Let's go to our Kodana uh, menu here again, and then we just said try locally, and now we will add it to a CI pipeline. <clears throat> CI pipeline, come on, click. Um, 
that is no ah, ah okay so it wants to add the file again uh, that's okay we can do that next and Azure pipelines I remember I saw some hands uh, yeah, you're out of luck at least so far because for for GitHub Actions, GitLab, and TeamCity, we have a, some kind of better support, let's say, where, where you can already preview the file. But that's still okay. I mean, don't get me wrong, because for all the other um, CI, CD tools, you can still just click on the little question mark icon here, and then you go to the documentation. And over there, it's in most cases, also just uh, just a copy uh, copy paste uh, thing. Yeah. But we will go with with GitHub Actions. So let me make this maybe a little bit bigger again. Nothing too fancy here. Um, workflow dispatch means you can trigger it also manually through, through a button. Push is self-explanatory, I guess. Pull request, that's an interesting one. Because at, at least on GitHub Actions, the way how I use it, sometimes you, um, if the committer is not part of your repository, then they won't see the secret, uh, the Kodana token secret. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to mention this, this on the side, but maybe it's worth checking also pull request target. Yeah. Just in case you want to use that. I hope you remember. But in that case, the Kodana token is also available for pull requests. Uh, we will actually see this a little bit later. Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, one thing that's very important, um, you should always check out with fetch depth zero so that Kodana has all the necessary information um, to, to run the analysis. And otherwise, yeah, it's really just an action that we reference here and we have to pass the token. Yeah. So for the token, let's try. We will get the token. Let's see. And I already have this as a what I tried yesterday. So let's go with, I hope I don't have to have to delete that, but we will see. Uh, let me just go back here because this unfortunately takes a bit of um, yeah, switching here and there. So demo project, we need our address, the SSH address, Kodana demo. And then let's go back, I think it's here. At the address, then we get an SSH token. Um, you might wonder why is this actually necessary? And I will answer that question later. Okay, so this uh, SSH token, usually I should say, you would add this to a separate uh, account. Yeah, But for this demo purpose, I would just add it to my own account. But yeah, just keep this a note, create a, create a, a separate account for Kodana. And that's the wrong place. Uh, Kodana demo the second, and this. Oh, 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 password. Okay, not used so far. Um, let's go back. Oh, where's the browser? Where's the browser? Here. Let's try. So now it will check if the um, the SSH to uh, key is actually working. And okay, yeah, we already have that project. So let's choose a different name. <clears throat> oh no, 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 no. Oh no, I typed the backwards key. Oh. Where's the navigate? Oh no, it's, it's backwards. But I think it was created. Yeah, okay, we're lucky. Grab the token here. Thanks. Uh, afterwards, we grab the token. This is the Kodana token that your CI build uh, needs to re uh, make the report to Kodana Cloud. And then we go back to our project, which is here, I think. Yeah. Settings, actions. And here, I already have the token. So that was the last one. And now we we will just replace it, okay? And that should be it. Let me see my notes here. Yeah, Kodana token, uh, SSH key. And let's go back to Rider here and somehow say, oh no, I think we don't say anything, but we 
In the next step, we just finally add the file, the, the uh, GitHub workflow. So now we can actually commit. Come on. Or was it committed already? Let me see. Ah, where is it? It's not there. Let's try again. But where is it? It should be here. Oh, no. Okay, let's try this again. Is this the right place? But it's there. And why is it not showing up in my in my git? I don't see it. Hmm. What does this say? Let's see. Not much. Uh, no index, or let me. I, I don't quite. Ah, 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 all good. Yeah. So before I just deleted the file, that's why. <laughs> Sorry. So I committed the files already, the two that I, that I created with you. I just forgot to re uh, make a git reset, actually. So I added them here already, um, but same files that we just looked at. So now we can. Let's go to actions and or well, let's make a let's make a an empty commit maybe. Allow empty and push. So this should trigger GitHub actions. Come on. Yes. Now let's also take take a moment and actually look, look at what's happening there. Okay, um, so that's a single Kodana uh, action that gets triggered. You can actually have also multiple. Yeah? So for instance, uh, I think I mentioned that already, if you have front end and back end code, uh, you would actually set up two projects inside Kodana and then have one project with the front end code and one with the back end code. So, for instance, if you have mixed.net and JavaScript TypeScript project, um, cache restored successfully. So, that is um, also something to note. Yeah. That's still using the cache from the, from the previous run. Let's see if it's actually doing something. Um, it's using the cache from the previous run because whenever Kodana is running, it will cache the analysis results so that the next time it will be a little bit faster. Yeah? Or not just a little bit, hopefully quite a lot. Yeah? And for that, I'm unfortunately a little bit dependent on how fast GitHub Actions is. Uh, but we could also, I think that would also work. I don't know, no, it's running. I don't, actually, we have to wait. Yeah? Otherwise, I can't show you in Kodana Cloud what's happening. That's a funny story for, for me, actually. I always thought that's RD, but no, it's QD. I thought that's RD for writer, but uh, I'm such a, such a bad employer, employee. Um, OK, so now it's opening the, the project. It was pulling down the linter. Executing that, this is the uh, Docker mode, so not the native mode. For native mode, I will show you sometime later where you can find how the configuration file actually looks like. Um, we have the starter profile. Uh, package JSON files have not been discovered because, like I said, the Linter also supports uh, web projects. And it's taking some time. I blame GitHub Actions. That part will also uh, restore your project. So for instance, if you just run it on a .NET project, of course, you need to have all the packages restored that we, uh, that we use. OK, so I hope that goes through successfully. Never used. OK, some, some uh, warnings will then also get issued in the, in the report right here. 
So if we go, let's reload, and then there should be, I'm not sure is it work? No, in, under summary it should be. Uh, we have a, well, not very discoverable, but still something where you can say, okay, I have uh, uh, four, four times unused local variable, for instance. But the more interesting part is the detailed Kodana report. So let's look at that. That is what got reported in our new project that we set up on Kodana Cloud. Pretty much the same as we've seen before with the try, try locally uh, part. Next step, what I, what I want to do with you is, let's go back to my, uh, uh, yeah. Um, we will create a baseline. Yeah, I will not go into slide mode here anymore. Um, but we will create a baseline. So how does this work? Or just as a, as a reminder, like I said before, imagine you have a big project, you run Kodana, you will see a very different number here. Yeah? Like I could show you, for instance, uh, in the project that I maintain, the first run that I had, um, let's see, I, I put some into baseline already, but it was a thousand. Yeah, it's just a project I do on my own. So, but let's go back uh, to demos and to our Kodana demo here. How do you do that? First of all, you select all the problems. So just that little checkbox here, and then move selected to baseline. Yeah. That is what, what we just did is really just a change an, an intermediate change, so, so to say. It doesn't get committed to the repository, although I could think that might be possible at some point because we also have that SSH key. Um, but for now, we will just download that baseline file. So it's downloaded. Then I will put it into our Kodana test project. So here's the Sarif file. Okay, you don't actually need to see that, but if we go to... to this repository again you can see this file here this is new this is the baseline file and baseline means if i run the analysis again and i see the same exact um inspections if they if they are contained in the baseline then put them to the baseline or make them backlog so and let me see for the baseline stuff we also need to adapt uh the the workflow file so first of all let's put this into our changes here and then I will just, I will cheat a little and check uh, the change that I made prior. So for the action in our workflow, um, that we should also actually, um, we, we should actually pass the baseline file. And I should do this with cherry pick, select uh, change. Now I have both those changes that we need. So first of all, the baseline file, and then also to let Kodana know I have a baseline file compared against that. So let's try this again. And unfortunately, now everything is taking a little time until results are back, but we will do it anyway. Kodana baseline. Okay. Um, yeah, that is probably something that you want to do if you don't have a greenfield project, just not to be overwhelmed. Or you sit down for two weeks and fix all the issues. I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, we won't wait for the change, but uh, just to just to repeat that, what I what I anticipate what's happening is this eleven goes into baseline, and this this whole thing will be green. Um, instead of waiting for this 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 report to come back, uh, we will check out the next thing already, and that is. I'm sorry for the switching here. And that is fail threshold and PRs. So once you introduce your baseline and you have a zero on that first tap, then of course you don't want to introduce any more issues or any new issues. Uh, the way to configure that is through the Kodana YAML file. So right here. And then I think you also have completion here. So fail threshold. I can actually type control space here and then see yeah, all the relevant properties that we can pass. Um, but for our case, it's, um, it's the fail threshold right here. And it's fine because we discussed this before. 
uh, I have no idea why you would put anything else than a zero here. So you can actually also put 10 or, but then I don't know, you introduce 10 issues and you would raise it. There's one little thing where we, where we thought, okay, maybe it has, it has, uh, uh, or it, it can be a use case. Um, but I think I will mention that a little bit later. So fail threshold, that's what we're going to introduce. Um, what was the one that I did before? Oh, yeah. This one I skipped for now. You can add that, but it's really just important if you have multiple solutions. Yeah. So in my case, Kodana will find the single one solution. Uh, but if you have multiple, then you should also add that. Um, I will also save this part here where we switch to the recommended uh, one because they're not much different yet. Yeah, the two one uh, or the two. There was also a third one, but I actually didn't check it out myself. Okay, but let's go back to the to the fail threshold because or CI. Stefan should also love my commit messages, right? Um, conventional commit messages. I'm I'm really thankful. I have to say, like once I switched and I saw it in your talk, I I I only use it from now on. Um, so what do I want to do? Um, add fail threshold. Yeah, so like that. Commit. Now we could try. See, I should have a second tab here. Uh, at fail threshold, yeah. Now we could try just, and this is a second user I have here. Let's just check out one file and maybe introduce an issue. Um, edit. I'll just do this right from here because. Yeah, why not? Some property. So you see this this doesn't property. Oh no, you actually don't see it because it's too small. Um, but it's really just, you know, some some weird stuff, yeah. Um not not corresponding to the naming strategy that I or not naming strategy, but but uh code style and what's the word naming naming conventions that I want to have yeah but I will commit this anyways commit and create a new branch and create that pull request and then what you should see is that Kodana will actually perform a check here and what I anticipate what's happening is that it will show a red yeah because we like I said we don't want to introduce uh any more issues or any new issues and what you would do in github actions at least is to have a rule that's that says uh, a pull request can only be merged if all checks succeed yeah that would be the normal workflow um let's see oh yeah let's let's go back to kodana cloud actually or to the to the web interface so we have that was the second run that we had once we moved the uh, issues to the baseline now everything is here and what i still want to show you um because we uh, have only looked at this part here very uh, very briefly um for a single code issue you have several actions which you can perform so for instance you could say uh, i want to exclude this particular uh, path no, the, the first one is the pro, uh, the directory, I think. Or you want to exclude the file if just the file has too many issues. Or you want to ins exclude the particular inspection that is showing up here. Um, again, that will that was like the example I made uh, before. If writer says turn everything into static, you might say, okay, why? Uh, I'm not I'm not too concerned about performance. I pro ra rather have that semantically correct. But the most important here is this little button, because from here you can open that uh, file inside Rider, and we'll just quickly navigate there, and you can try to fix it. Yeah. Um, since we're here, let's also take a little closer look at the um, at the tool window down here. So that is. <clears throat> The Kodana results are part of this little icon here. And that is, if we zoom, can I zoom in a little? That's the problems tab. Yeah. 
you don't just have Kudana over there, but historically we we already had um, yeah the normal inspection view, um, then issues for tool sets and environments. That's I think I've I've only seen that once. If you have um, if you work with Xamarin, then I would suggest to install certain installers to make the project compatible. Uh, but yeah, it integrates into that tool window. And from here, we can, of course, also navigate. Uh, we can we can group, and that's the that's the most most important feature that I was waiting for because it was not available when I wrote the blog post um, to hide the baseline. Yeah, at first, in the first version, you would see all the issues still, even if you put them into the baseline. Uh, but now you can actually go here and say, okay, please hide baseline. Yeah, I don't want to see them. Maybe you want to see them if you have, I don't know, you finish uh, early on Friday and you say, okay, let's squash some some inspections still. Uh, then you might do that, but otherwise, yeah, I see no point. Um, the rest is, yeah, you have a preview window. Okay, you can refresh. Usually, you would see this little notification here. So whenever you work um, and the Kodana plugin notices that there's a new report available, then it would just download that or give you that, that notification and you can reload. Yeah, but in this case, I think nothing has, uh, has happened. And yeah, so let me check my notes again here. Yeah. Um, I have one thing I want to show you here, maybe at this early stage already. Um, because this, you know, this uh, pull request stuff, it's very hard to actually showcase. But uh, let me show you what uh, my friend is doing, Dennis. Um, who know or who doesn't know what Fluent Assertions is? Let's put it this way. So it's a testing library for .NET. Yeah, most would be used as in conjunction with uh, XUnit. So Dennis also just maintains an open source project. And at the beginning, I was asking him, "Hey, can you please <laughs> integrate Kodana into your project?" And he did. Yeah. And at first, he was a bit annoyed, but that turned around. I would say, uh, yeah. I mean, not because of the technical things, but more because of you know. Uh, because it was still in EAP mode, and then we, he had to switch licenses and replace the token, so it was more because of the, uh, for that reasons. Um, but very quick look uh, at his workflow file right here. So this has a couple more settings, um, and we will also look at the Kodana YAML file because he can also see. So uh, Dennis is excluding a couple of inspections by name also here one path is completely excluded tests makes sense yeah um fail threshold of 13 uh, I, I i'm gonna ask what's the reason um but what i what i really want to show you and that's the that's the cool part i really didn't anticipate that before but once we introduced that, there came a pull request uh, with a person trying to fix a couple of Kodana issues and by saying Kodana issues, I don't mean issues with Kodana, but issues that Kodana reported. Yeah, so uh, still not merged, unfortunately, but it was cool to see that this actually encourages people to uh, take the opportunity and you know lower the number of, of issues in a um, in a in a code base because the very same which you see here. Uh, let me see. I think Dennis also has a link here. Um, yeah, exactly. This should be it. Oh, no. Oh, where's the link to the... Uh, I, I don't know where the link is to to the same view, you know. Um, let's see if I see something here. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if he has a link somewhere. But let's see. Actions. If I can see it, let's see. Build. So there's one issue, unfortunately. Usually you would see the link here um, in in the summary. But because of this Docker native mode, it's not just uh, not there yet. Uh, so again, something that, that will be fixed at some point. Um, but I think this is not Kodana right here. 
go down now. Okay, let's check here again. Summary. So here you still have the summary, but there's no link to the actual report, unfortunately, because of the native Docker mode. Um, don't ask me. I think it will be fixed uh, pretty soon, but I think we can't uh, go to his instance of Kodana right now. Um, but still, the second one I want to show you is this is a pull request that introduced some issues. Yeah, it's still marked as, as draft, though, so all good. Um, but in that case, you would have Ah, maybe it's this one here. See, there we have it. Baseline seven. I I don't I don't believe that. Or or maybe that could be. Actually, yes, that could that could be. Um, ah, I'm lost in tabs right now. That could actually be because Kodana also has a PR mode which only. Uh, checks the files that have been changed in that PR. So in that case, I don't know, would it, but it should still uh, show up in the baseline. I don't know what's happening there. Maybe it's another project, or I, I don't know. So let's see. But but point uh, that I that I tried uh, to make here is encourages people, particularly in open source projects, to kind of discover what's going on. Where are some issues? Which one could I could I fix? Um, but also in the process of creating PRs, you see you, exact, you see exactly what's happening and uh, what should uh, what, what's currently failing. So this sh this one here should also fail. The commit that I made before, and you can actually see the push uh, failed. And I think also in my Kodana interface here, you would also see. Let's scroll up a little. There should be a second branch now also. Yeah, this one. And then we can see the one actual problem, and that is the uh, some property with the wrong uh, naming convention. Yeah. Okay. Um, next. Oh, yeah. About inspection settings. So I, I already um, mentioned that you can exclude ins inspections from here. Now, a second thing that's probably interesting is um, who's using dot settings files. Okay, a couple also, yeah. So the settings files allow you to uh, configure a couple of options for writer reshopper, so something that you share in a team. Usually, I mean, you can also have your own settings, but particularly about inspections, you would put them on the solution layer. For instance, if I go here and and I say this this warning right here about cognitive complexity, element exceeds co cognitive complexity, uh if i want my teammates to how to say uh recognize that a little bit more then i might choose to make this an error i mean it's, it's just an example and then say i want to save that setting to the team shared layer yeah and then that would show up in my i can actually show you once i do this and let's just try this locally um run again and this is where is it ah, i forgot something i forgot something uh let's you let's use another uh inspection for that maybe choose this and i will ex explain to you why this didn't work in a moment but let's try again locally yeah so now you can see those are marked as critical, which is maps to errors, basically. And if we want to this change to be to be visible on CI also, then we commit this dot settings file this year, uh, which basically has the solution name uh, prepended and then dot settings. Yeah, this is where we basically say um, unused variable is an error, for instance. Uh, but then there's also another kind of inspections people, um, and I expect this as a question, but maybe we take this more as a talk here, uh, actual presentation. Um, but those are Rosin analyzers. Yeah, a lot of people want to use Rosin analyzers, and I get it. Um, you kind of you can target multiple IDEs, uh, although I like the uh, quick fix integration a bit more here. Uh, but anyways. Rosin analyzers, those are disabled by default. 
but you can go to configuration and definitely also switch here to all inspections and then type Roslyn. Uh, we could uh, enable those inspections here, enable. And that's just one of the changes where you can see though, that those changes are only intermediate. So once you did that, you can you can have multiple changes to your to your settings. But once you're done, you download the Kodana YAML file again and replace it in your repository. And only then those changes uh, will will be will be visible uh, on the next build. So it's not that you have settings right here in Kodana, but you have to have them in the repository. Okay. Um, what else? Let me see. Okay, the writer the writer tool window we had quite a bit already i talked about that quite a bit um now the vs vs code extension so we also have a VS, uh, extension for vs code and that is particularly interesting i have to say because i i mean i get when people people make their choices yeah and absolutely fine with that but i guess for some reason i, I mean in some parts, I also like VS Code, but something that I would definitely miss are those inspections that uh, Reshapa and Ryder have because they have a ton, and you also don't get that through something like uh, Rosinator or something. Um, so, what if you have the coding experience from VS Code and the inspections that still come through Kodana into your VS Code? Yeah, that is basically what you see here, because the report is through that extension, let me show you. Um, so if I search for Kodana, then there's this extension here and I got it installed already. Um, and then this report is downloaded and you can just navigate through it. Yeah, you can also filter, search, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm not sure it should be also, it might be, I know that's a sec, it might be that it um, that it's still connected to the other repository or to the first version that I had. But yeah, you can filter, you would see the exact same uh, issues, just in a different representation. Okay, so that's VS Code. Um, and now I'm almost at the end, I think. Let me, sh let me check. Ah, not quite, not quite, actually. So let's go back to the to the presentation, where is it here? So we got inspection settings. Yeah, we got everything here, I think. Other pipelines. Ah, yeah, yeah, I, I almost forgot. So we looked at it in terms of uh, GitHub Actions. Yeah, looked okay, but still you have to navigate to the Kodana Cloud instance and check everything. But yeah, we, we had quite some people that also raised, raised their hands for Azure Pipelines. Uh, two requirements you have to fulfill to actually integrate Kodana with Azure Pipelines. And the first is you have to install the Kodana task and also install the Zarif tab uh, if you want to see it directly in Azure Pipelines. Um, the first one you definitely need, even if you use Kodana Cloud, the web interface. Um, that's also documented in, in, our, in our docs, but I still want to show you how it actually looks. So... That's the wrong one. Here's Azure Pipelines. So here I installed everything already. And then you can see this tab. This is the new one that gets added if you install the Zarif uh, tab extension. And then you s basically can browse the, the issues. Yeah, uh, It's not the most fancy interface, I would say, but it's it's something to go through the issues. Particularly if you have a baseline and you you're not introducing too many, I think then that that also worked works quite well. Um, but the second uh, the second is Team City. Uh, I will not I will not put this into full mode. Um, Team City, Kodana tab. Okay, yeah. So let me try to remember. Let's put this into yeah a little bit bigger. So that's still from my last try that I made. In the let's go through a couple of old builds here. But the first one, or one of them, was this here. I had 11, 10 new uh, issues, and as you can see, 
Team City actually has Kudana integrated already, so you don't need to navigate to Kudana Cloud. You also have a, a um, separate tab for that right here. Pretty much the same interface as you see in the dedicated one. Uh, from here, you can also compare with another build. So for instance, do I have a lot of builds? Yeah, so from main, for instance, with one of the previous ones, and then you would see uh, the differences uh, compared to the other one that you selected. And, and another nice feature um, is, where is it? Let me, let me think. It should be this here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, I first need to go here to show you something. Kodana here and Kodana step. So if you're in Team City, it's really just a single step that you can add. You can also use Kotlin to actually write that in a Kotlin file, but you know, for this matter, I just I just added a Kodana step. Uh, same happened here. We added the token. Uh, we chose the linter. Uh, we passed the the baseline file. What's particularly interesting is this little checkbox here because this uh, utilizes an, a feature that we have in Team City for a while already, which is in particular, if you go to a to a build. Um, then those inspection uh, issues, uh, they can be shown as a problem or as a test, actually. And tests can be assigned, can be muted, can be, can be assigned, can be investigated. So, for instance, I could put this on, on another person. That person would be notified. And then it's basically their issue yeah, uh, to fix. But you can also mute them and etc. cetera. Yeah. And again, here you can see inspection violations or, or uh, inspection issues, they actually fail the build. Um, that's it for Team City. Let me go back here. Uh, next slide. Okay, I will make this a little bit bigger. And maybe, maybe that one I just do with words. Uh, plugins is an interesting story because at uh, at the very beginning i showed you that one issue where you can call slash x and then basically tell inspect code to load a couple of plugins um that is very very easy in kudana right right now but it's not yet supported for .NET. there's one tiny little thing that i also investigated with with a colleague just before here uh, and it seems to be an easy fix, but um, yeah, not too sure yet if, if it's really the case. But otherwise, the way how you load plugins is actually just you go into Kodana uh, in the Kodana YAML file, and then uncomment these two lines and put the plugin ID right here. Finding the plugin ID is really easy, actually. So, for instance, if we talk about the plugin that uh, I mentioned before, come on, um, the cognitive complexity right here, uh, then you just scroll, scroll down and then copy the plugin ID and then load it. Yeah. But like I said, locally that's already working fine, uh, not in CI yet, but should be an easy fix if we're right. Um, where are my slides? Here. The next one is code coverage. Um, they actually also need to show you something from the documentation for that because, um, because, oh, where is it? Future work here. Because it's also not supported yet for, for .NET. But just to, just to explain the idea. Um, in settings, you would also say, I want 50% code coverage, for instance, and that applies to every single method. So whenever a single method violates that rule and it doesn't have at least 50% code coverage, you would see a violation. Yeah. Um, okay. What else? Let's go back. All right. Let's close this. Uh, license audit is also something interesting. That's something that I mentioned at the very beginning. Uh, let me see. It's here. Oops. Yeah. 
Uh, that's, that's just a sample because this feature will or should arrive in 2023.3, so somewhere around end of year, uh, something like December. And this already has the project audit implemented for, for .NET projects. Unfortunately, this is buggy because you see we actually have problems, but project audit still passes, but I was told front-end team knows about it. Um, they, should, they should use Kodana. Um, but let's go to direct dependencies because, well, if you consume something, you're not really interested in the transitive dependencies that may violate the license, but you want to know how do I get to those transitive dependencies, right? And that I, that we get, or to that information, we get through the direct dependencies tag. So then we can see, okay, which of my dependencies violate, um, is prohibited. For instance, here, Microsoft ASP.NET Core authentication is Apache 2, but we have GPL 2.0 only. Yeah? Um, I have to be honest, I have no idea how that tab actually works. Um, so, and, and what it does, I'm not too sure. I mean, you see all the dependencies that we have. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, but configuration should actually also get to some file that you commit in your repository, as far as I understand. Uh, otherwise, what's interesting, I can say, is that you can click those, those little licenses here and actually get a brief, um, how to say, explanation on what they allow, what they don't allow, and yeah, conditions, permissions, limitations, basically. And what, uh, what dependencies belong to that. Uh, belong to that license and i think now the last topic if i'm not mistaken the last one is uh quick fixes that's the most interesting one that that's the the question where i said i will answer it later um so why do you need that ssh token or was there another question that i forgot to answer oh yeah can you tell me Ah, yeah, that was because of the plugins. Yeah, I should have mentioned that because that particular inspection is coming from uh, from a plugin, and plugins, like I said, are not fully supported yet. Yeah, but hopefully soon. Okay, thanks. And but the second was about the uh, SSH token or SSH key. So why do you actually need an SSH key if Kodana is really just checking out code and analyzing it? Yeah. So the 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 vision in to some extent it's all already implemented as far as i know is that like simple in inspection issues wouldn't it be nice if they get fixed automatically so you commit something you forget to format the file or like in our example that we had here uh, i'm not following the let's go back i'm not following the the correct wording uh, it's removed again, but here there's some property. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice if Kodana could actually type alt enter, so to say, yeah, and say uh, rename to the proper way? That's the idea behind those quick fixes uh, to make that to make that work automatically. Uh, some ideas that we have there, or or not ideas, but but the way it's supposed to work. Uh, hope I don't know when it arrives in .NET, but as I said, that's the vision to have that. Um, but the way it's supposed to work is you can choose if the fix should be applied on that branch directly or if it should create a new pull request so that you have, you can, you could also reject it. Um, but yeah, those two, those two ways uh, how code fixes uh, or quick fixes are applied. And that is also, if you remember about the fa fail threshold, what we thought would be would be one use case, maybe if you merge two branches together, and they and and that merge introduces a no uh, a new issue, then maybe you set that fa fail threshold to five, but immediately you get a new pull request that would fix uh, those new issues. Yeah, maybe I never happened to me, but I also develop alone, so uh yeah exactly so 
Yeah, that's the last slide, but I still have to say uh, something. I forgot to add one more slide, actually. Ah, yeah. Uh, one thing I want to mention, wanted to mention is, um, since I know some people here are involved in open source projects, uh, if you do something like that, then you can apply for for a license for that um, to have that working uh, in your in your repository. And yeah, with that, like I said, it was the first time I <laughs> did this this talk. It has it has a lot of switching between windows. Uh, I think I still have to uh, work on that a little. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, could also be about Rider or Reshopper. I don't mind. Um, I'm here and yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Questions? Yeah. Shoot. So um, I want to understand more about uh, how uh, that uh, checking works, uh, how uh, dependencies between cloud and IDE works. Uh, um, could you just elaborate more? You showed uh, that you muted, but I, if I'm not mistaken, you muted uh, tests in Team City. Uh, but if you are going to mute some um, issues in Kodana, mm -hmm. um, what's the options? Uh, first option, you can add it to baseline. Uh, and is it mm -hmm. possible uh, mute it, but not add to baseline? And also not, not to exclude it on uh, project level, I don't know, for some time? Or... Mm. So in Kudana, it's only about excluding certain mm -hmm. inspections, yeah. Um, one thing that I think I missed uh, to, to mention is in, in Rider or Reshopper, you could still uh, mute a single insp uh, issue uh, with a comment, for instance, okay. uh, also with a restore comment. Uh, but on Kodana's side, I think if you exclude an ins inspection, um, you exclude all occurrences of them. Yeah, and otherwise you can only exclude tests, for instance, like Dennis had in, in his uh, configuration file. Mm -hmm. um, if you talk about muting something on Team City, I'm not too sure if if muting something would actually have an effect because. Uh, Kodana still. I'm, I, it depends on if Kodana gets the information if something is muted, yeah. Because otherwise, Kodana will exit with a zero, zero uh, non-zero exit code, and that would fail, yeah. Um, okay, it means that anything not not addressed. Yeah, yeah you all is clear. It means that uh, all the options to mute uh, they should be done in the repository level. You should push something to repository i would say yes yeah yeah i mean i'm i'm a fan of having everything in the repository about configuration exclusion etc yeah. yeah it means that uh that kodana cloud doesn't have any state doesn't say uh, for not this no no exactly yeah. yeah yeah i wasn't i wasn't too sure about how it works with the licenses actually i mean just to be honest here uh, but like I said, I couldn't try it myself. Uh, I just got this one uh, sample project where I could browse a little. Um, so about the licenses, I'm not too sure, but I would also expect that that's a file. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, you showed uh, how you compared uh, builds inspection results uh, mm -hmm. for different branches. Mm -hmm. Again, I think it was also for Team City, uh, but. Is it possible to compare uh, results, reports uh, on other in, platforms uh, in cloud? Uh, in cloud, I um, I don't think so yet. No, I don't mm -hmm. think so. Uh, at least I haven't seen it. But this uh, goes back to the argument I made initially. I mean, pretty new product. Um, I was surprised Andreas invited me already <laughs> with it. I was pretty surprised. Um, but interesting. but there. Maybe there will be something in a couple of months, even maybe next year. Yeah, I I have no idea. Um, if if you're interested in that, it would be at least good to go to the issue tracker and put your vote on on some features suggestions. Yeah, because I mean that that's also what what my colleague said to, uh, today when I talked to him. Uh, please let them know when they have any questions or feature requests. They should file that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was actually so funny. Also with the no about what was it? I think about the it was about some feature and i was like 
asking, okay, when will this arrive? And I, oh, yeah, next year. And the next time I checked, it was there already. And I just said next year. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, better, better like that instead of the opposite. But yeah. That's also one small question about base lights. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if I'm sent correctly, uh, mm -hmm. it's possible to use a uh, different baseline for different branches or not. Theoretically, you could do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you push that uh, to different branches with different uh, baselines. Yeah, yeah sure. What, you what? could. Yeah. Theoretically, you could. Mm -hmm. And if you if we open uh, that report, mm -hmm. we'll compare result uh, with the current branch you're talking about the team city feature now right uh, about cloud yeah, uh, about cloud. about That's cloud reporting. well then it compares with the baseline if okay. that if that run uses your i don't know baseline from branch x mm -hmm. then all then those from the, the uh, baseline will yeah, be put on the second tab yeah, yeah. This is in the file, yeah. Welcome. There was no question back. Okay. Hi, Michael. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How, uh, since Kudana is running in the cloud, how do you handle code where the customer has an NDA requirement and a contract and does it allow you to send method names, etc., to the cloud? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I can, uh, I can answer later. I mean, we can, uh, I can, I can message you later. Okay. I, I got your email, um, <laughs> but uh, off the top of my head, no, no okay. idea. Yeah. Great, thanks. I read that an uh, no. <laughs> on-premises version of Kodana is uh, in the making, so maybe this would be an option. Where did you, did you get that question from your neighbor? No, no it's no. funny because we talked about it before. No, I just, I just went... read it on my phone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but good question because we prepared for that. Um, uh, yes, yeah, something like that is planned for next year, but I can't give any more details. Yeah, yeah but that might be an option for for COVID that, I mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I I actually didn't think of that, but yeah, true. Yeah, cool. So is there a possibility of integrating Kodana with our Nuke build project? <laughs> Shahab from YouTube is asking. Who was asking? Shahab from YouTube. OK. Um, as far as I, I mean, for, for everyone else, the question was somehow 50-50 about my work and <laughs> private life. <laughs> uh, so about the project that I maintain. But as far as I'm concerned, um, there there are no they 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 don't overlap in in uh, functionality. So I would wouldn't see a need to have particular support for that. But if there is an idea, then talk to me, please. Yeah. I do also have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Why does Kodana? need the full fetch depth is the, is this is this tied into the caching mechanism it might be yeah but i don't i'm not too sure but there was something it's some time ago and it was at the time when i wrote the blog post and it needed that and unfortunately i mean i would search if i wouldn't still be sharing my screen <laughs> because i need to go through our internal chat um and you never know but um, there, there's there's some reason. I can also let you know a lot later. Yeah. But yeah, for cash might be a good reason also to have. I mean, commit hash is always there. There's also interestingly, um, but I thought, is this actually necessary? You can you can also run Kodana on on the uh, through the Git history. That's also possible. So it would, as I understand, check out every revision then run and report but i mean personally i i didn't think too hard about it but i don't see for me personally not a not a big use case yeah but if you want that if you want completeness about your issues uh, maybe yeah. 
Okay. Any more issues? Uh, <laughs> issues. <laughs> Shit. Uh, any more questions? No? Then thanks again. It was nice, it was nice being here again. Uh, cool. Then I heard beers open. No? no? Uh, quickly, quickly let me. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing. Okay. So, so image is there, sound is there. Good. Um, yeah, Matthias, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Officially, and as 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 I think we are one of the normally every every speaker every first time gets gets a coaster from us and i think you already got one from us so for you we have something very special um but all second time speaker also get but you're the first one <laughs> no 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 um these are custom custom uh, stickers with our logo this time thank you and this time it's not only for the speakers so uh for the people here in the audience um this is our our sticker set we have now and we make a collection game out of it every meetup there will be one color to pick and this time it's it's the white one the white version is the first one so after i'm also finished there is a box in front where you can grab a sticker um, I hope I have enough. Yeah, so we have 10 different ones after I'm finished. <laughs> There's over one, one crabbing one. No, take it. Good. Um, yeah. Once again, thanks to our sponsors, Theater Every and Rubicon, uh, for your financial support that we can also make the stickers and for chat brains for the, for the product license that we will raffle in a moment for the screen i need to draw so <laughs> 50 50 50 chance so so congratulations shahab Um, please send us an uh, email at, uh, at the email address team at .net .at, and we will send you your license. So, and I want my mouse cursor back. And one last thing before pizza and beer. We always want to improve these meetups. We need your feedback. Please, one QR code for, for the audience here. One, you have, very easy to type into URL. Uh, for the stream, yeah, would mean a lot of us for, for us, and yeah, that. Um, have a nice evening here. We I saw already the pizza and the drinks, and yeah, have a good time also on stream. See you next time. Bye.